This is the back of the DMX operator. Starting from the left, we have the MIDI input. This is used to control the DMX operator from an external MIDI device. Next, we have the DMX polarity select switch. This is used to control the output of the DMX out so that you have either two positive or two negative. This makes it compatible with most product on the market. Next, we have the DC input. It requires from nine to 12 volts, 300 milliamp minimum, with a tip being positive. This is the Lightstream Control DMX operator. It is an intelligent lighting controller, but you can also use it to control part cams. What I've done here is hook up two pocket scans to scanner button number one and number two. How you do this is each scanner button will handle 16 channels for a total of 192 channels, but you must address them to begin properly. In other words, number one begins at one, number two begins at 17, three, 33, four is 49, five, 65, six is 81, and so on. So I've set the first pocket scan to number one and the second pocket scan to number 17, which begins with number two scanner. We're gonna start by programming this light. To program the light, what we first do is go up to program. The program button, we push it and hold it down for two seconds three seconds actually, and you'll see the program LED and the display start to blink. Next is pick the scanners we're gonna do, number one and number two, which are our pocket scans. Then we go to number five, which is the shutter for the pocket scan. Bring it up and you'll see it lights up. It's already set up with a gobo. We can change those gobos. We can change position of the lights. move them anywhere we want. What I'm going to do to show you how to program, we're gonna set it up into a simple little box pattern. This will be our first corner of the box. Hit MIDI control, then hit scene one. This is going into scene one. There's eight scenes in this bank. There are 30 banks, so you get a total of 240 scenes. This is scene one of bank one. Next, we're gonna to go to the next channel, which is across the way. Go up a little bit. That would be our second scene of the box. We go MIDI record, scene two. Well, now I'm gonna come down. Go over a little bit. That would be scene three. So this is MIDI record, scene three. As you notice, when I hit it, all the LEDs are blinking, telling me it's receiving the command. Next, we go over to the next position, which is the finish of our corner box. Hit MIDI record, scene four. Now by doing it, we have now scene one, scene two, scene three, scene four. So you'll notice it's scanning rather slow. I forgot to mention that the pocket scans have uh, a speed control on them. So what we need to do is recall scene one. We're going to be editing this program now so that it moves back and forth faster. By bringing up, we go up to 254, and then re-enter that program. It's going to move faster. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See how the slow movement? Now we move that again, set it to 254, which is the top speed for the we record it. Now watch how fast it moves back and forth. Compare with the old non-speed setting. So we're gonna modify those also. Again, we recall that scene, readjust this, go up to 254, re-enter it, go back to four, do the same thing. The reason it's difficult, the pocket scan has a feature that when you put number six all the way up to 255, it automatically uh, runs itself to the sound. It has a built-in sound chase. Just one of the features on there. So now let's go back and check those scenes out. See if it's moving fast enough. One, two, three, four. It is faster. Now we could go ahead and chase these scenes, but I'm gonna go ahead and enter these others. I've already entered some positions, so we're gonna go ahead and 
we record those. Six. Seven. And eight. So now you'll see That's a simple scene. We can go ahead now and do what's called a scene chase. To scene chase this, all we merely have to do is get out of the program mode by pushing and holding the program. The unit goes in the blackout. You can tell by the little blackout LED. Hit the blackout button. Now it is in scene one, bank one. To make that move to speed, we merely hit the auto delete button. It's auto run is what we're setting up. Now you have the choice of making it move Now it's moving to the speed setting. See it's going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or in this auto mode we also have can use the tap sync. The tap sync will allow you to set up to the speed you want. I want it to move if you notice it's moving to that speed. Let go and it continues. We want it to move a little bit slower. There also is a fade time. Let me slow this down even more. We can also set the fade time. By moving fade time, we can have it take a slower to move from one to the other. See, it's moving, taking its time moving now. I happen to like them to snap. Another option of chasing is you turn off the auto delete button. You can manually step through the scenes or you can hit the music chase. In music mode, it automatically picks up the beat of the music so it goes to the music. That's called scene chasing. Here's some additional features you can do. If you see where right now we're in bank one, scene one. If we go to bank two, there is nothing in this program. So what you can do to help you in programming is, you go back down to number one, here's where they were. We hit, we go into program mode. Again, it's in bank number one. We hit the bank cup, excuse me. We hit the MIDI record button then we go up to the bank we want to assign. We're going to copy this whole bank to bank number two. Now we hit music bank copy. When we do that, you saw the lights blinking. Now we're in bank two, scene one. Now here's, we've copied it all over. And now we can edit it. We want to change the gobos. Yeah, we want it to have chasing gobos. Hit MIDI record, scene one. We can do the same thing to scene two. Let's change the colors too. Just to show you, here's bank one. Scene one, two, three, four. Now we go up to bank two. Here's scene one, two, three, and four. Position's the same, but we've changed the colors and gobos. That's a real fast way to start editing. I'm gonna show you how to set the chase. Now, it's always good when you have chases, because I'm not sure if there's anything in here we can go and delete the chase. What we do is hold the chase down and then in program mode, hold the chase down and hit delete. When you do this, you'll see it auto, everything blinked and anything that was in the chase number one, we've erased. So now we're gonna be able to reprogram it. Again, when I hit chase one, you see the display reads chase one, it's on scene one of bank one. We, now we select our first step that we wanna put into this chase. I like that. So now I hit MIDI record. You saw the lights blink when I hit MIDI record this time. So that means that's entered in step one of chase one. Now we go to step two, hit MIDI record. Go back, MIDI record two, MIDI record. I have some other programs, I mean, I have some other scenes programmed in bank 30. So now when I hit bank, it changes bank. So I hit pair. So now to, these are all steps entered in chase one. To get out of program mode, you merely hold the program down. It goes into blackout mode again. Tap the blackout button. You see the display seeds 101. We hit chase one. 
Now we can chase, have the same features of chase. We hit the auto button, hit the tap sync. This is what I recorded. The DMX operator, once hooked up, will always receive MIDI. If you want to know what channel you're receiving, press and hold the MIDI record button. When you do this, you will see the flashing. Second, the second two numbers are flashing. This is the MIDI channel you're receiving. If you see, I'm, I'm receiving channel two. To receive up, there's three, and we can go down to one, but I want to receive MIDI two. Press and hold again, and you're back to your regular. These are your scene one, bank one, uh, excuse me, bank 15. We can change, we'll go back to, now what I've done here is I've set the octave range to send out channel one here. First we select the, cha the channel we want and we see it's also channel two. Then using the trans, uh, the octave, we've gone up three octaves and we've set up transposed all the way to a plus 12. This gives me the top end of the keyboard of the MIDI receiving of this. So we're sending out on channel two and we're gonna start way down here. It's already sending out bank 11, scene five. And if you go to the chart in your book, you'll see that already is note number 87. So I've, I've gone up three octaves on this just so I can show you some of the implementation. This is bank 11, scene five. I go way up here and that's bank 14, scene five. Bank 14, scene six. If you go up again, you'll see it's bank 15, scene two. Going up again, it's scene eight. Now the next one will start your chase. Well, nothing's gonna happen with this unit because we're still in blackout mode. If we go all the way up to the top here, we can actually turn on and off. This is note 126. We've turned off blackout, but now on the display, you see this note right here, which is note number 120, is turning on Chase number one, and the first ones I've entered in chase number one is, it's uh, C number one, bank number one. Now it's not moving, so what we've had to do is pre previously set up the chase mode. We were in music trigger. So now, by tapping on this to receive the bass notes, you see it's, we're in chase mode. Now I want to get out of chase one. I hit it again. You'll see the display goes back to the scene. I can go up again. Now this is chase four. Now to turn it off, I hit it again. Well, went into three, turn off four. Now we're, turn it off, we're in music trigger. So it's gonna chase to the music. At the same time, if I want to go just to a scene, I can actually sequence my chases by recording this into a sequencer. Now, if you notice, it's note on, note off. Now it says scene on, but when you hit it again, it doesn't change the set number. That's bank number 13, scene five, but I've turned it off. Hit it again, it doesn't change the number, but now it's on. If I go to another one, it comes down to scene one, bank 13. Now, if I go down an octave, by by hitting the octave, going down one octave, what I've done is transpose down here. Now the beginning is on bank 10. Again, there's 11, 12, 13. If you notice up here, I'm no longer doing the chases. I'm just addressing the different scans. Coming up again here to octave, I go up three octaves where I know this is gonna implement my chases. Here's blackout. Here's my chases. That's MIDI implementation of the DMX operator, you can control it via MIDI.